This is one of those sketchbook sessions where I sat down to draw and had no idea what to do. So like any normal human being, I decided the only logical way to proceed was to create a dragon monster thing. This is my comfort zone to draw monsters and creatures, the space I return to when I'm stressed or simply when I don't know what else to do. So let's take a look at this drawing and what I'm doing as I put it together today. I think this might be a little bit of a different approach than we normally take, because normally I just ramble about all kinds of things, but let's take a look at the weird architecture of this creature. I often start with the head or start with the mouth because to me, those are the most interesting parts. I feel like the head of a monster always gives you some idea as to the story behind it the mood, what it does, you know, it, it can be as simple as the teeth. The way that the teeth are built are going to immediately tell you what kind of thing this monster eats. If it has sharp teeth, that obviously tells you it's probably more of a carnivore than it is an herbivore, but not necessarily. If you look at something like a hippopotamus, the teeth structure on a hippopotamus is quite exaggerated, quite crazy. If you look at the skeletal structure of a hippopotamus, it's a little bit odd. I had this project I used to do where I'd give students a uh, skeleton and they had to then illustrate what the animal might look like. And a hippo skull was one of the most fun ones to give kids because it's so different than what the animal actually looks like. Warthogs are kind of that way too. Um, a bison skeleton looks very, very different. But the point is that you can tell a lot about an animal by looking at its head. So even though I'm only a couple minutes into this drawing, you can tell that there's something interesting and something strange about this creature. It's got teeth and sharp teeth, sure, but it also has these bone-like structures on the outside of the face that make it look like it has larger teeth than it does. This perhaps tells you that it's something kind of like a, an, a snake that is mimicking snakes that are venomous, right? You've got the king snake and the coral snake. And the coral snake is quite venomous. The king snake is not, but the king snake actually mirrors much of the color and patterning of a coral snake. And so perhaps this creature is the same way. It's not nearly as dangerous as it looks. It has to appear as if it has larger teeth so that things that might be tempted to eat it, see it as prey, would be a little bit turned away, a little bit deterred from that investigation. I like to blot in the blues like this. I, I mean, obviously it doesn't need to be blue, but I like working in the background colors. It gives me a moment to kind of think about what I'm doing, and it also helps it to stand out. It's another reason why this tan paper is so fantastic. It gives me middle tones right out of the gate, which is just lovely. And this has been one of the fun things as of late. I've been trying some new art mediums, and this has been one of them, these acrylic markers. Also the white pen, which you'll see kind of show up later on in this drawing as well. But it's, it's important, I think, if you have the financial capacity to get new tools every once in a while, because new art tools fundamentally change how you approach things. For me, this sketchbook has been that to a really large degree. Working from paper that's not white is almost revolutionary. Even though this is what I've done most of my pastel drawings on for a long time, every time I work on an acrylic painting, I obviously start in the same way. I, I tone the canvas. Uh, when I work digitally, I always tone the canvas. Usually I leave it as a, a kind of a middle gray. So this sketchbook is just that same train of thought, but I, <laughs> I've just used regular white sketchbooks for so much of my life, I hadn't thought about it. I'm actually using a white acrylic marker here, or pen, to kind of lay down some of those tones. This one was starting to die on me, so I think I did grab something a little bit different as I went. Um, I, I, I hate it when things die while you're in the middle of a project. Not only is it inconvenient, but it also feels like an old friend has left you, and that's just sad to me. And another thing that I want to mention is that none of these things that I'm using right now are expensive. Like these acrylic markers are not very expensive. The microns are not very expensive. The sketchbook was maybe the most expensive piece here. I think it was 16 or $20, but it's actually so thick. Each page is so thick that I'm able to work on both sides without any bleed. Even when I'm using uh, acrylic like this, 
even if I'm using large India ink type of uh, blacks as well. So it's a hundred, no, it's a 70 page sketchbook and I'm able to use every side of it. So it's actually 140 pages. So this is going to take me longer than most of my sketchbooks. Even though I'm working in this one pretty prolifically, it's gonna take longer to fill than almost any sketchbook I've had before. So if you're looking to get a new sketchbook, I would highly recommend that you check these out. I'll have um, not a link to it below because I'm not sponsored in any capacity, but I'll just have the kind of sketchbook it is. I believe it's a Nil Tech is the, uh, is the brand. And it's, it's my favorite sketchbook I've ever had. It's just fantastic. The toned paper, the quality of it, it's everything about it is just wonderful. That's probably why you're seeing more of it in the re my recent sketchbook sessions because I've, I've kind of gotten away from some of the Inktober stuff and I'm focusing on these things more. So again, my process for this kind of drawing, I, I've given the basic shape language for how this thing is going to come together. And then I gave myself a background around it. Now I'm starting to work in where some of the highlights are. And I think really that's, for me at least, just trying to think about where the light is coming from. This stage could easily be moved to far further in the drawing process, but right now I'm doing it here because this is allowing me to figure out where my light is coming from, um, both directionally and just like what kind of light it is, how bright it is. If you are feeling any kind of staleness in your art making practice though, I would highly suggest that you try a new thing. And that might be a new art supply, but if that's a hard financial decision for you to make, or you're just really comfortable with the art supplies that you use right now, consider trying a new subject matter. Now, I spend a lot of time working on things like this, these monsters and dragons. So it might seem like I don't use that same advice, but I actually do. I try things that are uncomfortable to me many, many times. In fact, when I was still teaching in the school, one of my kind of edicts for myself was if I looked at a reference and said, no, I don't want to do that. That looks too difficult. I had to do it. And I think that's not a bad thing to, to do to yourself either. It might be a little bit self-punishing, but you know, for an artist, there are certainly worse things to do. But try different subject matters. If you generally draw figures, try drawing animals. See how the knowledge of how the human body comes together fits together when you're trying to do an animal. If you normally do things like this, uh, try doing things that are cute. You'd be surprised how many of the same skills that come into making eldritch horrors and dragons and monsters actually come into making like teddy bears and cute little things. Just look at Pokemon. Like there's so many Pokemon that are kind of striding that line of really cool and cute at the same time. And I love Pokemon. The, the recent game, the most recent game, Violet and Scarlet, were really disappointing. That's the first one, first batch of Pokemon games I didn't finish in their entirety, which um, has actually put me in a position where I'm not sure that I'll buy the next game if it's as buggy as this one was, which is disappointing. That's a, a franchise that I have enjoyed since I was 12 years old when I got my first Pokemon game, which was Blue Version. Uh, I know everybody started with Red Version and everybody started with Charmander, but I'm like, no, I'm gonna use the Turtle because Squirtle was fantastic and Blastoise was great. Who doesn't wanna have cannons coming out of their shells? And if you don't have a shell, then um, my condolences. So I'm going through now and I'm just creating more and more detail as I move through this thing. Each pass is kind of um, just me sorting through things, trying to understand what's happening and what I want to make happen as I go. I'll try to work in the bigger shadow shapes and the bigger highlight shapes. And then later on, I'll take small microns and I'll go through and I'll actually create everything that I want to in there. It's occurring to me now as I'm getting close to nine minutes into this that I'm probably not going to be able to narrate through the entirety of the piece unless you want to sit here for the, <laughs> the 26 minutes that this is going to take at two and a half times speed. That's something I probably should mention too. I almost always do these videos sped up. So please, please, please don't watch them and ever think that, goodness, I need to get faster at my drawing. Pretty much every video here on YouTube like this is sped up. Uh, and it's that way because it's a little bit easier for people to follow. This drawing in its entirety took me an hour. And so a little over an hour, about an hour and five minutes. And the way that I have it sped up here, it's supposed to be 26 minutes. So depending on if I do some cuts and such, you'll probably miss out on a portion of that. But just keep in mind, this whole drawing took me a little over an hour. So don't find yourself or try not to find yourself giving you Try not to give yourself too much external pressure because the people on YouTube, myself included, the people on Instagram, you're not seeing everything. You're seeing the finished products on Instagram. 
On YouTube, you're often seeing things that are highly prepped ahead of time, and you're seeing, you're seeing the awkward portions cut out, and you're seeing almost everything sped up. I try to keep the awkward stuff in. In fact, sometimes, uh, especially in my sketchbook tours, I'll just show everything, even if I hate it. Um, but I, I do leave in some sketchbook sessions where they're not my favorite, but I also try to leave in some of the coolest drawings when I do sketchbook sessions because um, I would make it harder for people to watch if I left in like the really, really boring stuff. You're not seeing the exactness of what's going on. You're, you're seeing what is being presented. So just keep that in mind, even when I'm trying to be fairly authentic, like almost all of my videos are sped up except for the podcast background sometimes. And that's just because it's a little bit more entertaining. Um, if you want to see the full versions of that, you can always let me know. I could probably put those up and they would just be unedited with some music in the background. I'd be happy to do that, it'd be pretty easy. Uh, if I didn't wanna do that on YouTube, I might do that on a secondary platform or something, but it's, uh, yeah, I just wanted to disclose that. I mention it every once in a while. Um, I don't think most people think that this is actually how fast artists draw, but if you're starting off and this is what you're observing, that could be a little bit intimidating to think that every artist draws at this crazy speed, and we really don't. Most of us are pretty slow workers. Most of my sketchbook sessions are an hour plus of drawing that are then reduced to 10 to 15 minutes. And so it might look like I'm a speed demon when it comes to drawing, I'm really not. I'm a pretty quick drawer, but I'm not nearly as accurate as some other people, and I'm certainly not as fast as some people are. Um, but that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really impact anything. When you draw, you're not really in competition with somebody else. You are in competition with yourself, if anyone. You're trying to get better. You're trying to improve things. Well, as always, thank you for listening. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon.